so hello everyone welcome to jk lectures and uh, today we will start a new topic that is dna structure so before moving to the lecture i would like to have some questions regarding dna structure and questions are like what proportion of dna is translated into protein in percentage and uh, what is sin and anti conformations endo and exo conformation of ribose what is puckering and what are the puckered conformations of ribose in dna uh, the fifth one is an experimental question that can be asked in a viva so it test you why rna is hydrolyzed rapidly under alkaline conditions but dna is not the sixth question is a new one that is the hookstein base so what do you mean by hookstein base pairing and what is the triplo, uh, triplex form of dna so moving to the very first question what do you think what proportion of dna is translated into protein so your options are around 5% 10%, 50% or absolute 100%. So just comment your answer and uh, stop uh, the slide and think about the answer so that we can continue. Yeah, so continuing with the answer that is quite less as expected that around 1.1 to 1.4% of DNA is translated into protein and rest either end as a RNA as end product or are the transposons or the DNA that is intergenic DNA, large duplications or the microsatellites. So around only and only 1.1 to 1.4 percent of DNA is translated into protein and rest are either the transposons or RNA as end product. So moving to the uh, history of DNA molecule, how DNA was isolated and how the structure of DNA was given by the James Watson and Francis Crick. So in early 1868, Frederick Mischer gave the term nuclein and isolated the first genetic material. After that, around 1914, several um, experiments were performed by Avery, McLeod and McCarty using different types of enzymes and treating it with the cells and uh, observing the conditions and uh, they proved that DNA was a genetic material but not all scientists are convinced with the idea so again there is an experiment that comes into existence that was the Griffith experiment and that was the transformation experiment they used some virulent or non-virulent species and experimented with mice again then in around 1952 the experiment was proved that uh, by the Hersey and Chase so they actually told about the principle behind the transformation experiment of Griffith so after that the uh, DNA structure was uh, the structure of DNA what actually DNA looks like is the question and the question was solved by the James Watson and Craig but they used two different uh, resources from the Irwin Charga uh, rule that is uh, the purine is equal to pyrimidine and several other statements are there in their law so the Chargaff law, Chargaff rule uh, and the data that was the X-ray crystallography data, X-ray diffraction data, sorry, is uh, basically given by Francis, uh, Franklin, Rosalind Franklin and Morris Wilkins. So they used the, the two resources to give the structure of DNA and uh, that was the revolutionary thing. So, uh, that is around 1953. So this is how the, the Watson and Crick DNA double helix look like. Uh, it is having 3.4 angstrom differences between the two nucleotide. It has a helix or pitch of around 34 to 36 angstrom. And they have a diameter of around 20 angstrom and so on and so on. So moving to the second part that is uh, how uh, DNA is formed and what is the basic component of it, a DNA molecule is a nucleotide. So a nucleotide is composed of three different things that is a sugar, a phosphate and a nitrogenous base. So nitrogenous base in a DNA can be a purine or a pyrimidine. So there is a clockwise and anti-clockwise numbering of the atoms that is present in a heterocyclic ring. That is clockwise numbering in case of pyrimidine and anti-clockwise in case of purine. So this is the sixth carbon, this is the second carbon this one is fourth card so moving to the structure of adenine we know this is the amino group and uh, this carbon is supposed to be the sixth carbon 
So the IPSC nomenclature of adenine is in, adenine is nothing but 6 amino purine. So sixth position is acquired by an amino group. Moving to the structure of guanine, not the sixth, but the second one is occupied by amine, but the sixth one is occupied by the oxy group. So the IPSC nomenclature is nothing but two amino six oxy purine. So this is how the structure of purine looks like and the IPSC nomenclature of adenine and guanine. So moving to the structure of pyrimidine, pyrimidine contains cytosine, thymine and uracil. So this is the numbering of uh, atoms that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So fourth position was nothing but acquired by amino group. So this is 4 amino 2 oxy pyrimidine. So moving to the structure of thymine and uracil. Uracil is the simplest one that contains 2, 4 dioxy pyrimidine. 2, 4 dioxy pyrimidine. And there is an additional methyl group in fifth position in case of thymine. So thymine is nothing but the methylated uracil that is in the fifth position. So thymine is nothing but 5 methyl uracil or you can say 2, 4 dioxy 5 methyl uracil. So this is how the structure of purines and pyrimidines can be remembered. So moving to the hydrogen bonding which is one of the important thing in the structure of DNA given by Watson and Crick. So they said that if between adenine and thymine there are two hydrogen bonds and between cytosine and guanine there are three hydrogen bonds. So we can see how this two hydrogen bond, bond is formed between the adenine and thymine molecule and uh, the three hydrogen bond is formed between cytosine and guanine molecule. You can practice this at your uh, notebook how this hydrogen bond is formed and what are the atoms involved in the formation of the hydrogen bond. So moving to the next part that is what are the predictions of Watson and Crick apart from giving the, the structure of DNA helix. So they said that they are anti-parallel in nature and uh, they uh, during their project work they made uh, DNA helix using both confirmations of parallel and anti-parallel nature but during the parallel uh, confirmations they found uh, that the nitrogenous bases are not opposite to each other and are adjacent to each other so that there will be no formation of hydrogen bond but when they make anti-parallel there is a uh, positions to form the hydrogen bond and they accepted this as a model so these were just the predictions of Watson and Crick but later when DNA replications comes into picture that how DNA is replicated they are pretty sure about this model and uh, everyone accepted this model because the complementarity of uh, nitrogenous bases in the DNA structure is known by everyone. So they all not also uh, given the structure of DNA they also predicted there may be a mode of replication so they suggested this model like uh, DNA can be replicated and uh, there is how DNA replication should look like. So the parent strand can form a new strand and the new strand is synthesized using the template of the parent strand. So they also give a model to suggest that the DNA replication should be possible. So moving to the questions uh, that what is the puckering and what are the puckered conformations of ribose. So basically uh, ribose is a, a 5 carbon sugar. So these five atoms are arranged in a single plane. But if any atom from uh, their native place moves towards the upper position with respect to fifth carbon to, uh, with the same side, it will be called as same side. It will be called as endo. And if it will move to the opposite side, it will be called as exo. So that can occur with the second carbon as well as with the Third, car third carbon and there are four different types of puckering or puckered conformations of ribose that may be endo and exo in case of two carbon or in case of three carbon. So the next question is uh, what is the conformation of uh, this molecule uh, in the Watson and Crick model of uh, DNA double helix. 
So what is the conformation of Packard sugar in DNA double helix of Watson and Crick? Any guess? There are four different options like 2 prime endo exo and 3 prime endo exo. So the answer is the conformation was 2 prime endo conformations in all the ribose sugar. So there is another question that was asked earlier in the first slide that is what is sin and what is anti position. So uh, sin and anti position is nothing but uh, if the nitrogenous bases are present on the same side of the sugar it will be called as sin and if, if it is present apart from the sugar it will be called as anti. So this two is anti conformations and they are the sin conformations. So moving to the next question so, uh, that was asked uh, that is what is Hookstein base pairing. This is quite an abnormal phenomenon or unique phenomenon in the structure of DNA that will lead to formation of DNA triplex rather than forming DNA duplex. So this is how it looks like. So in normal case of uh, normal case cytosine will form triple bond with the guanine, but in case of Hookstein base pairing cytosine will form only double bond and this is quite a unique phenomenon. So you can see in this picture how there are two different hydrogen bonds are formed between the cytosine and guanine molecule. So this is basically guanine, this is cytosine and again this is cytosine. But this is the normal hydrogen bond 1, 2, 3. So basically this is 3 hydrogen bond but in case of the structure this is form only 2 hydrogen bonds. So this I can say is a Hoekstein base or this is Hoekstein base pairing. So uh, looking at this picture this is a PDB file or we can see how the Hoekstein base pairing between the C, G, C molecule looks like. So again there is a unique phenomenon that is the DNA tetraplex formation or DNA tetraplex structure that may be a parallel form or the anti-parallel form. So this is quite uh, similar to the structure that was given here that there are four different nucleotides arranged in a plate like manner that will be like guanosine complex. So you, it can be asked in a question that which of the following nitrogenous bases can form the DNA tetraplex and your answer should be guanine. This is a PDB file representati representing the four guanosine tetraplex formation. So moving to the next uh, uh, thing that is the different conformations of DNA as we know there is a famous BDNA form which is present in our DNA. There is a Z conformation of DNA so knowing the difference the B form and Z form this is only the left-handed conformation just all is the right-handed conformations of DNA we should remember the 3.4 angstrom helix per base pair that is 3.7 in case of Z form so in uh, the B form of DNA this is 2C endo conformation that was given by Watson and Crick and th that uh, in case of Z form that may be 2 prime endo or 3 prime endo so uh, moving to the next form you can see this A form, B form and Z form of DNA. So most of the pictures are taken from the Leninger principles of biochemistry from the 5th edition and you can read it early, uh, later. So the final question was like uh, in, a frit, in a test tube what, why RNA is hydrolyzed rapidly under alkaline conditions that is OH minus conditions but DNA is not. So the answer is simple like uh, in uh, uh, RNA there is a 2 prime OH group so which is absent in case of DNA so DNA is nothing but deoxyribose and there is H only in place of in case of uh, RNA there is a OH at this 2 prime end so this OH will be uh, attacked by this nucleophile that is OH minus and it will arrange itself to form a 2 prime 3 prime cyclic intermediate so this is you can see how the mono phosphate derivative of 2 prime 3 prime is formed and this may be hydrolyzed at second position and third position to form a mixture of 2 prime and 3 prime monophosphate so uh, which is absent in case of DNA so DNA will not get easily hydrolyzed in presence of OH minus or in alkaline conditions but RNA can be easily hydrolyzed or rapidly hydrolyzed in a test tube so this is an important question so answer is uh, already clear so this is the last part that uh, is asked in most of the interviews vivas or uh, any other platform so what is the gene or how you define a gene so please uh, uh, write on the comment box 
let me see how many you uh, how many of you can define a gene in a better way or uh, in how many ways you can define a gene in a correct pattern so thank you for listening to the lectures and all the very best